Hello, Aaron Mara here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to invest in UK shares. Now, this is going to be a part of a series of videos that uh, um, we're going to share with you on how to invest in shares in general. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to, to basically keep receiving these videos and information, which I hopefully will help you to, um, build your wealth and ultimately get better at investing. Three, two, one. Here we go. So what's the topics for today? I'm going to cover um, a whole range of topics, but I'm going to talk about a little bit about myself, okay, my history, um, why you should invest. Um, we're going to cover what is the stock market. You might have heard about the stock market and you see all these charts going up and down, but we're actually going to talk about um, what is the stock market. And then you might wonder, okay, well, there's a stock market, but then what is a share? Well, we'll talk about the basics of what a share is, um, the types of shares, um, is it risky to buy shares? how to start investing, what type of accounts to set up, and then we'll wrap it up, okay? So this is just the first um, kind of episode or um, video just to give you an introduction to the very basics, but you need to understand these types of things. So without further ado, let me talk a little bit more about myself. So as I said, my name's Aaron, okay? Um, I've got 25 years plus of financial and investing experience, um, as you can probably tell by the gray hair. Um, I've had some successes, but I've also made quite a few mistakes as well along the way. So I'm going to share with you my tips and ideas over these series of videos of what to do, but also what not to do. My background to justify my um, knowledge to, to share with you guys out there is I'm an ex-Bank of America and Credit Suisse first Boston equity analyst from many years ago, which I did. That was one of my jobs when I, um, when I worked in the city um, and I advised pension funds and organizations like that to invest in various stocks. And I specialized in the telecom sector back then. Personally now, over the last 20 odd years, I've been a very active investor in both UK and international stocks and shares, predominantly in the US market. But today we're gonna to focus on the UK market for you to understand the basics. So that's where you really, really gotta um, focus your effort to understand the UK market. Um, on top of all my investing experience, I am a chartered accountant, um, which is uh, a qualification here in the UK, which takes a bit of a slog to get to. Um, and I've been practicing as a chartered accountant with my own firm, Samara, for the last 20 years as well. So I've got a lot of financial experience um, generally. I own uh, an accountancy firm called Samara, um, and we, we're a finance firm as well, and we specialize in the healthcare sector. So I've got a lot of experience in business. And, I, and at the same time, I'm also in the healthcare sector where um, I also own dental clinics as well. So I've got a lot of financial knowledge, as you can hear and experience, but also I'm a huge, huge advocate of passive investing. And what I mean by that is you can generate cash or generate profits in your businesses or employment or however you want to do it, but then use that cash wisely to invest in other opportunities such as shares, um, such as property, such as other good returning um, areas to invest in. And, I'm and I, so I'm a huge believer in DIY smart, DIY smart investing, that i.e. you can do it yourself. You don't need an expert, okay? You just need to understand the basic principles and then do the research and invest in, in, your, invest in the market, invest in yourself and get that knowledge. There are lots of experts out there um, and independent advisors and financial advisors, and, th and this isn't really to replace them, what I'm sharing with you today. What I'm trying to do is educate yourself so you can have the choice to either ask the right questions of your advisor or alternatively, do it yourself. And what I do, I do it myself, for my family, for myself. I invest very actively in various shares and I make some huge gains, I make some losses, but this is my kind of idea is to share my knowledge and experience to people who perhaps don't have as much experience as I do. So, first point, why invest? Well, in my opinion, it's, it's huge, I suppose it's a huge potential to grow your wealth, okay? Now, if you look at where you can invest your money these days, you can put your money in a bank account and with interest rates at rock bottom, you're probably gonna be losing money over the long term due to inflation, because we're in an inflationary economy, but interest rates are so low that the money you put in, bank, in a bank account today in a year's time will probably be worth less because of inflation. So you need to think, how can I park my money? Where can I put my savings? Whether it's a hundred pounds, a hundred thousand pounds, a million pounds, whatever the size it is, okay? Where can I put my money that's get, so it's gonna grow? So it beats inflation. So, so if you look at um, 
the, the performance of the stock market, the UK stock market over the, the long term, has always outperformed putting money in, um, in a savings account. Now, obviously, you can invest in, in index funds, but you can also invest in individual shares, which we'll talk about a little bit about later. Of course, investing comes with certain risks, okay? You can lose money. Um, however, I like to look at things over a longer term period. Um, investing is not necessarily a short term one day type of thing. That's called trading, and we'll cover that as well. But investing is looking at a, a stock, looking at a share, thinking, okay, over a longer term period, will that make money and will that ultimately increase my wealth? So that's the justification for why invest. It will ultimately get you control to, um, to, to manage your money and to uh, hopefully grow your wealth as well. <clears throat> so how do you invest? Well, what do you do? And what is the stock market is probably the, the next question. And ultimately the, the, the stock market is basically a, play, a marketplace where you can buy and sell shares. And in the UK, we have something called the LSC or the London Stock Exchange as well, the, the large companies are listed. So you, on that, you have something called the FTSE 100, which are a, kind of an index of all the large companies. So you have companies like BT, Vodafone, AstraZeneca, they're the large companies and they're publicly listed companies which you can buy and sell shares. Around the world, you've probably heard of other, com other exchanges. There's the, there's, the, there's the NASDAQ in America where shares like Google or Tesla are listed or you've got the New York Stock Exchange or other American companies are listed. And if you look around the world, there are exchanges in France, Germany, India, you name it, all over the place, and they trade their respective shares out there. So the stock exchange ultimately allows one to publicly trade the, st the shares and stocks in UK listed companies. So like likes the Vodafone's, like the, like the um, AstraZeneca's, like the, the GSK. And ultimately it's a regulated environment where you can buy and sell the shares. That's what the stock market is. And understanding how it works, understanding how you can ultimately buy shares, make some money for the long term is, is something you should really consider doing. So I'm talking about shares, but what is a share? Ultimately, you might be wondering what exactly is a share? Um, ultimately, it's a piece of a company. So a company issues shares out there and it you have, it ultimately gives you the opportunity to purchase a share in that company. And hopefully you buy a share at a price, and hopefully that price you buy it by at, in a month, three months, six months, 12 months, 10 years, that price, what you bought at, has gone up. And if you sell it at that point, that's something called a capital gain. And that's the gain or profit that you make. Now, in these large listed companies, you, you will probably be one of many millions of shareholders because these companies, large companies, issue out millions of shares out into the public domain, uh, which you can ultimately purchase on the stock market. So that's what a share is. Now to make it clear, just to, for your own benefit, you might have heard the word stock. Well, in America, that's what they use the word stock, that stock is the equivalent of a share, okay, here. It's the same thing. So when you're, when you're in America, you'll be buying a stock. In Amer if you're buying American shares, in the UK, you're buying a share, but they're interchangeable as, as a term. So types of shares. Um, there are a variety of shares you can buy, but the most common shares that you'd be buying is something called an ordinary share, okay? And that's the ordinary share that's been issued by the company. There's something called preference shares. I won't go into detail today, but ordinary shares are the normal shares that you'll be buying in a company. And that entitles you usually to, usually to maybe to a dividend in the share, that i.e. some income if that company's paying some dividends, uh, and voting rights, so you can vote if there's an AGM on what the company should do when they have a, 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 at the shareholders meeting. So that gives you a right to vote. Now you might, your vote might be one of millions, okay? But you'll typically won't have that, your one vote might not have that much influence, but if there's a group of shareholders coming together, that can influence how a company um, is conducting its business. And if you look at um, like pension funds, they own large chunks of companies. They have a lot more votes, a lot more power. They can then influence boards of directors um, of companies as well. So giving you a, a basic understanding here. Now, is it, is it risky to buy shares? Well, as I said at the outset, no risk, no reward. Can you lose money? Absolutely, of course you can lose money. Um, but the key is to understand, do your research, and hopefully, rather than losing, you make some money. And of course you can make money and you can lose some money, but ultimately it's, the key is to having an investing strategy and being very disciplined enough to stick to it. And that's a really key point here, being disciplined. Um, you will lose some money sometimes, but you will make some money. And hopefully the net effect is that you'll make more money than what you lose. 
Okay, so what I'm trying to really do is trying to, lots of people throw lots of terminology and make it very complex and think it's a, it's a mysterious world of investing in shares. It really isn't, okay? It's actually quite simple. You just need to get over the terminology and understand how to do it, what are the procedures, how to buy a share, and all those types of things. Because it's not rocket science, it's really trying to understand the process and how to make that first purchase of a share. So how do you start investing? Well, first thing you need is a little bit of money. You might have a hundred pounds, you might have a thousand pounds, you might have whatever, okay? It doesn't matter, the size of money is irrelevant. It's the same principle, okay? And the thing is, you need, you need something called a brokerage account. So a brokerage account is something that you can sign up online and you can ultimately open up an account, like a bank account, and you put this hundred pounds into this account. And there are a few out there in the UK, you may have heard of, there's one called Interactive Investor, which is what I use. There's Trading212, there's Hargreaves Lansdowne, there are a variety out there. And there are, I think some of the main banks might have their own accounts as well, but these are ones that are quite well known in the UK space. And what you do, you open up account and you can ultimately um, start putting some money into it. And when, once you put money into it, you can start buying shares, simple as that. Now, on my next video, I will show you how to do that and the process of doing that. Um, but when you start opening up your account, there tend to be three kind of accounts that you can open. One is a general trading account um, where you basically put £100 into that account and then you can go and buy a share or shares in something. Um, but there's no minimum amount that you might, amount of money you put into it. Alternatively, there's something called the ISA accounts. And ISAs are something that you should be looking at and probably the best starting point if you don't have an ISA already because that allows you to put money into this account and any gains you make on that account are absolutely tax-free and any income you get on that account is absolutely tax-free as well. And you have a limit of £20,000 per year, which is quite a generous limit to invest in. So that's a great area. If you don't have an ISA, you don't do an ISA each year, great areas to start and put, do with an ISA account. It's maybe drip feed a little bit of money into that account every month. Or the third option is something called a SIP, um, a self-invested personal pension. And ultimately, again, if you put the money into this pension and it grows in value um, through investing, um, that money is um, tax-free as well. Um, however, of course, when you put something into a pension, you can only really get access to that money. And if you've grown it from one pound to a million pounds, you can only get access to that money when you retire. So three types of accounts there. Um, your most likely ones you'll probably start off with is just a general account or just an ISA account. Those are the two to probably look at and maybe a sip a little bit further down the line once you get a little bit more experience. So what, what we'll do next time, I'm going to run through how to uh, navigate an account okay, and how to set up an account. Um, and I'll show you how to do that um, with probably an interactive investor account or maybe a trading 212 account so you can see how that works. So in all, it's not rocket science. It's quite easy to do. Okay. Um, we'll show you some ideas and other things to look at in our next episode of how to invest and what to look for and how to research the types of stocks that you're going to buy or stocks or shares that you're going to buy. Um, but if you need any help or need have any questions, please put some comments below um, in the video. Um, I'm happy to help and give you advice and point you in the right direction and watch out for our, our next episode. And make sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We're here to help. Good luck with your investing. Thank you.